Thank you for having me and thank you for being here at my talk. So um, I'm going to tell the story of Force Asia, how we started scale and sustain our open source development during the last 10 years. Before that, a little bit about myself. I am one of the co-founders of Force Asia. I also recently got elected to be a board director of the Open Source Initiative a global organization based here in the U.S. So I consider myself very relatable to you in the community here. Since last summer, I've been working on open source and inner source strategy at Zalando, which is the biggest online fashion platform in Europe. So yes, I'm very lucky. I have the opportunity to work with people from the three continents around the world. And this is all because of open source. So I feel grateful every day to be part of this community. This is a recap of what I'm going to talk today of my slide. At first, a quick introduction about Force Asia, what and why, three application that we develop, and a little bit on open source hardware production. And then uh, I will cover some lessons learned over the years in 2009, um, how we build and grow our community. And finally, I would like to share some ideas how we can work together. Force Asia, our mission is to build a better world with open technologies. We focus on three areas. First, develop open source software and hardware products. Second, we organize events and meet up throughout Asia to bring people together in physical spaces. And we organize a lot of education program online coding contests that teach people how to contribute to various open source projects. The organization is registered at a private limited in Singapore and Vietnam, but we operate like a non-profit. We generate an income to support the community and continue the open source development. Some of the income models that help us to fund the whole operation are, for example, we offer software as a service, we um, sell hardware, uh, we organize events, um, we got sponsorship, and we also offer consultancy service to companies. We are a network of people from everywhere, not only from Asia. We have a lot of contributors actually coming from Europe, and many supporters are here in the room, as I can see. But we all share the same vision. We want to build a better future by sharing and collaboration. Um, let me share some numbers so that you can have a better understanding of the scale and the scope of our organization. On average, every 15 minutes, we will get a must pull request to one of the Force Asia repositories. We have 35,000 people on our mailing list and social media. Almost 4,000 developers register on the Force Asia GitHub. Every year, we train about 2,000 people through our coding programs. We have several events and meet up throughout the year at all location in Asia. And right now we have about 100 authors for our Force Asia blog um, website. These are some of the projects developed by the Force Asia community. We have uh, Suzy AI, which is an alternative to Google Home or Alexa, a smart speaker device. We have our own distribution. We, we do open source hardware. We have uh, imaging editing app. We have uh, automatic documentation generation. We also have an open source game, many projects. And uh, as I said in the beginning, I would like to take the chance to highlight three of my favorite projects. First of all is the Pocket Science Lab. This is um, a USB power device open source hardware. It is a combination of different instruments, the oscilloscope, multimeter, logic analyzer. There are also a lot of digital pins where you can plug in all kinds of sensors. 
Uh, yes, I have. Uh, the ball could be extremely small and portable. So um, our friend over there will pass out. So if you can, uh, you can take a look. We have the schematics of the hardware, the firmware, and also the software that control it. Everything released under open source and available on the Force Asia or on GitHub. This is how it looked like uh, on the uh, on the Android app. So if you have a phone, you can just download, look for Pocket Science Lab, and download the application. Um, you can also install it on your desktop. We produce uh, the hardware in Sunshine and also in um, Berlin, Germany. This is a close up of the device. And uh, seen a few months ago, we started to distribute this throughout the world. We have distribution channel in, in Singapore for Asia. We have distribution channel in Europe, and we also have a fulfillment center here in the US. So if you want one of those, you can just basically order online. I have a few here with me if you're interested. We sell it at uh, $60 per, per device. It basically helps uh, students are happiest to measure all kind of data and uh, good for science experiment. The second project that I want to introduce is our own event management system called Event Yay. We organized events in 2009. We run a lot of events also, and we always find it difficult to find an open source solution that's good enough for ticketing or speaker handling. And uh, of course, if we have a choice, we'd rather not use a closed source software. So we decided uh, to develop one ourselves since 2015. And right now, the system be able to, ha hand to handle ticketing similar to Eventbrite. Uh, we offer a very easy process to register the speaker. And something that I really like, we have our own scheduling system that allow you to drag and drop different topics to a timetable. So let's say if you have five, uh, like 500 or 1,000 of submission, it makes your life much easier as a content manager. It comes with Android application where you can scan um, QR code of your attendee, view the schedule similar to what you have here. And this is the interface of our scheduling. Now you can see, uh, you can see um, it works for a single check uh, event or many different check the system be able to handle. And it also generate a printed version of the schedule if you want to give the handout to your attendees or something like that. Uh, we have the feature to be able to select your section, bookmark your session, and ask it to your Google Calendar. And finally, we even integrate the name badge uh, custom design to the event. So you can basically design your own na name badge um, and print it out to your attendees and speakers. The third uh, project that I want to introduce is our open source smart speaker that I have right here, powered by Stussy AI, our own open source um, AI system. I'm going to pass this around. Thank you, Andrew. It's run on any um, many uh, device, and of course, you can install it on your own server. It works very similar if you are familiar with uh, Google Home or Alexa Echo, similar concept, but you have the control over your data. Uh, you can easily set up the speaker by download the Zuzi installer. We, we release a tutorial online that helps you to build your own speaker to a Raspberry Pi. There is a list of components available and also uh, the, um, the order link so you can just get and build on your own. Another thing that's really nice about this solution is um, it's possible for everyone to participate and contribute. So we developed something called the SUSI AI SKU uh, CMS that allow the user and the contributor to write skill for the AI. So basically, every skill is, is an action type. 
that allow you that allow the user to communicate with uh, with Susie. Um, to write the skill, it's very simple. We make it like a wiki wiki style content management system, and we create our own markup language that that called the language of thought that make it super easy for a beginner to contribute the knowledge base for Susie. So um, these are the three projects of many projects of the Force Asia. Uh, some of the projects are for fun because we try to encourage our developer to work on the technology that they like, but a lot of our projects also generate the income so we can continue to grow um, the ecosystem of the Force Asia. How did we do it? Uh, I would like to look back a little bit um, in in our history and share some lesson learned from the whole journey. In 2009, my partner Mario and I founded the Force Asia with the goal to connect Asian community with the global force uh, developer. In that year, we hosted the GNOME Asia in Ho Chi Minh City and we got to learn and get in touch with a lot of local user groups, not only in Vietnam, but in the neighboring country like Cambodia, Indonesia, and uh, Singapore. Uh, in the same year, we also started to write our own distribution channel. Uh, the company back then working, working on offering web services so that we can get generate an income to support our open source development. In 2010, after we got in touch with a lot of uh, local activists, the people who want to work on open, uh, more on open source, we kick-started new projects. We also hosted the mini uh, DevCon in Ho Chi Minh City and again, the second Force Asia Summit. I still remember that year we have 47% of participants who were female. That was something really nice uh, and, we, and we seldom see at tech conference. So in 2010, the lesson that we learned after two years, how to grow a community. At first we learned that we need to understand the landscape, uh, the culture of the local people, what, the, what is the motivation, what they want to achieve in order to offer them the opportunity and tell them how open source can help them. Another thing that we try to do, we try to promote contribution apart from, code, apart from coding. As you know that the success of a project not only rely on developers, engineers, and code, but we need all kind of people in the ecosystem. So we promote different type of roles um, that uh, beside beyond software, for instance, um, designer, writer, promoters, organizer, and mentor, we try to keep the entry barriers very low. For instance, we try to have very good documentation. Um, we also label different tasks from the beginning onto advance and a very friendly environment so everyone can join in. We also learned that people love to travel and meet other people face to face. So we made a commitment that we will continue to organize events and give people more opportunity to travel and to meet other contributors. In 2011, we um, introduced Libre Graphic Tour to the local community that show them they can make us and design with free software. We invited experts and um, LibreOffice contributor from the game project Inkscape uh, and many more to come to Ho Chi Minh City. We did an open design week. Um, we accepted many uh, of the artwork that make by free software. And we even go to university to introduce the tool to the teachers and students in our school. We got a lot of uh, support and attention from the, the students and teachers back then. At the same time, we continued the Force Asia Summit uh, in Ho Chi Minh City. And again, the lesson that we learned from that year, in order to attract people, you need to be part of the community. Contributors are always looking for exciting project to work on. So if you offer the project around, if people are interested in art and design, so you offer something that's more appealing to the people. People like to work with positive brands that are doing cool things, but also good things at the same time. And uh, you need to make very clear to show the people what are the opportunities 
in open source or for them, uh, like giving recognition, uh, financial support, travel, or offer them a job to, to work with your organization. And um, design process that they like to work with or they are, or, or, or they are accustomed with. In 2012, we uh, developed more application and it's also our second year uh, being part of Google Summer of Code. This is an image editing app developed by, uh, started by a young Vietnamese uh, developer in a very small town in South Vietnam and it's still uh, continue to, to be available these days on Android and Android. Being part of Google Summer of Code Gsoft brought us a lot of benefit and we learn a lot by participating in the program. So we increase the visibility of the organization and make ourselves known in the developer community. We also get code contribution over the summer. And the best thing was to connect with so many different organizations around the world that, you, that we can learn from. But we also realize it's quite challenging to, to run the program. Uh, the students are often less committed compared to the mentor, and when the program ends, the contribution also ends. And for many years, not only us, but a lot of organizations are facing the same problem. So we constantly think how we can grow the contributor base and keep people on board. In 2013, we decided that we want to do more open source education, in education to educate more people to prepare for the younger generation to, to increase the pool of developers and contributors who are able to work um, in the open source space. In the same year, we also decided to move our infrastructure to a hosting service. This uh, it was a big decision for us. Setting up infrastructure in North is hard, but maintaining has got a lot of effort. Our people like to focus on development, so we have to make a compromise to move our, <laughs> our service to GitHub. Even though GitHub is not entirely open source, but we, we learned that we got to go where the people are and what people used to. So that was the decision to host all the Force Asia projects on GitHub. We start uh, to establish connection with uh, university and school throughout Vietnam and start to teach people how to use Git and how to work with Python uh, as most of our project written in Python and show them how they can contribute in various ways. We, um, at the same time, we cooperate, uh, um, cooperate with development organizations like the GIZ or the UNESCO to work on educational content. Our opportunity at that time was we see the increasing number of students who use Linux within the country and also the English ab ability of the young people also increase. So maybe in the future, language is no longer a barrier for entering to the open source world anymore. In 2014, it was the first time we organized the Force Asia Summit outside of Vietnam. In the same year, we started our first open hardware project. This was a picture taken in 2014, and I saw somebody uh, back then also here today. <laughs> As well, this is the picture taken together with um, Praveen Patel. is a visit teacher from India. It was his first time ever travel outside of the country to attend a technical conference. And he told us that he'd been looking for an affordable device to help his students to learn science, to make science more exciting for the young kids. And uh, so we started to look around and we said, okay, we will make a commitment to, to Bravin. We try to turn his idea to reality. And today we have the device after over four years of working is now available in the market and uh, it being pilot in school in Singapore and India. I would like to share also some lesson learned about hardware production. It is a much longer cycle compared to software. 
requires higher investment, higher risk, and if you do not have a self-funded model, it's really difficult to sustain the project. In order to produce something, if you talk to the manufacturer, they always ask for a build of materials, which is a document listed all the raw material, the component, the, um, uh, the assembly process. And no matter where you produce, you need to have a local person who can speak that language in order to help you to handle logistics and um, inventory and ordering with the local uh, supplier. Another thing that we learn from ordering, working with manufacturer from China, there is something called the remanufacturer offer, which is uh, the comp refurbished component or return component co from customer that provide a, a, a cheaper price um, and lower the cost of your product. Another thing that you need to put in, uh, into your calculation is consider 40 parts. And it's always important to, to consider about the availability of different components and uh, the local schedule time, for instance, public holiday. Some, uh, in some months, the Chinese people have holiday over two weeks. So if you, you have a deadline on your deliveries, you need to take all these things into account. Moving to 2015, uh, we decided to move the Force Asia Summit to Singapore and started the development of our own event management tool. Since 2015, the Force Asia Summit has always been happening in Singapore because it's easy to access for a lot of people from different countries. We got very good support from the Singaporean government and very good facility if you want to do research. There are a lot of maker lab, there are a lot of um, uh, advanced uh, machine 3D uh, printer, uh, laser cutter, many things that offer if you want to um, to invest in technology. So Singapore is a place, uh, great place to be, uh, to be, and it's now the home of the annual Force Asia Summit. Also in that year, we started the Open Tech Summit in Europe as a continuous of the Linux talk, which ended in 2014, but we want to continue the momentum to keep it going. We bring more peer contributors to Asia, connect them uh, with the European community, and now uh, the Open Tech Summit Berlin happen every year in May. 2016, we launched our first online coding contest, CodeHeat, and organize a series of science hack days in Asia. CodeHeat basically focused on code contribution via pull requests. People from anywhere can participate. The good thing about the program is young developers can work together with peers from everywhere and get the support from the mentor directly on certain issues in pull requests. The winners will, get, will win a trip to the Force Asia Summit and uh, the participants will get digital success certificate and thank you present from us. Every season, we got about um, 600 to 800 people participate. This is one outreach program for code heat in a school in Hyderabad. Lesson learned how to retain the developer and scale. And scale. We need to set a very clear expectation, not only from our side, what the organization want to achieve, but we also need to understand what are the expectations of our contributors and try to, uh, try to fulfill. We uh, develop contribution guidelines throughout all the Force Asia project to make it clear and easy for people to attend. And we try to keep a minimum number of two maintainers on any project, promote peer review process, Delegate tasks and assign project lists for um, uh, different repository, and we also try to promote mental roles. We realize that when people have more responsibility, they tend to be uh, more excited about working uh, working on the project. And it's been, it has been a very uh, good um, uh, strategy uh, for us to promote uh, developers to become a mentor and then to become project leads. This is a um, science hack workshop in Belgium, India. Uh, another science hack day in Singapore when we show people how to uh, make cool 
uh, product with uh, our do-it-yourself laser um, cutter. In 2017, we published our Force Asia best practices. These are some of the highlights of the practices. For instance, March 1 issue with a pull request, something really like a symbol, but uh, it's not easy to, to, to enforce. So um, for instance, break big issue into multiple small issue, always provide test system and green source, and um, only change what you taste in the pull request or help each other review pull requests of each other. Uh, encourage people to test before they really submit a, a PR. Document white coding. Uh, and then after some time, they can earn the right access. And one thing very important, we try to avoid a minimal private chat. So everything related to the project should happen on the public channel of the project to make the communication transparent to, to everyone. And how we make sure that people follow the best practices. So we encourage people to remind each other and it has been working very well. So you change the, the, the young people, the next year they even become more strictly following the, the practice than, than yourself. So it's been um, a very good development uh, method for us. In 2018, we tried to connect closely with our community in India, China, and around the world. For the first time, we have a yoga fest in Hyderabad. Over three days, we bring our contributors around India together and also open to the public. So they do a lot of hacking, uh, fixing bugs, and enhance a new feature for um, some of our projects. We hosted uh, hackathons together with the UNESCO in Vietnam and Singapore. And uh, we run the Open Tech Summit in Sunjan to show people our uh, partner manufacturer and show people how uh, the, the entire open, open hardware production works. La uh, in this year, we bring the Force Asia team to the Chaos Computer Congress in Germany, which is one of the biggest hacker conference uh, in Europe. 15,000 people were there. Uh, we got in touch with a lot of cool projects and they also give us feedback to improve our board. 2019, we celebrated the 10th anniversary of Force Asia. This is uh, the picture taken of that event earlier this year in March. On the front row are the two youngest speakers of our event, uh, and Charlie and Sophia, they are daughters of my very good friend, um, Kirutika, who is in the blue shirt, and she is also the lead organizer of the Mecca Fair in Singapore. Uh, something happened recently. We acquired the Voice Republic together with the Open Tech Company in Germany and released it under open source. So Voice Republic is a professional live audio streaming and archiving of events. There are a lot of good content on there. The entire uh, stack now being open source and it go under the Force Asia umbrella. Earlier this year, we also announced the Force Asia Academy. We're going to offer open source courses that are certified by the Singaporean government uh, in Singapore. And we're also looking for partners around Asia to offer similar uh, courses so that more people can learn and work with open source. The whole idea of this uh, course is is a self-guided learning method. We have teacher that act as a facilitator and mentor. We provide the tools and equipment for students to learn, encourage self-learning. So to summarize what I um, resented uh, all about, about uh, Force Asia and our development, there's a few things that I want to highlight here. Sustainability, uh, some of the thing that we find that work well for us, develop best practices and share the best practices, ensure that people uh, agree and follow, create a welcome, friendly environment for everyone, constantly attract new contributors by 
organize coding program or contest promoting mental rules and provide resources, supporting long-term contributors, offering uh, travel support for them to, to go to conferences, um, offer work, or even if there's opportunity to hire them to work on your project, draw different type of income model to pay for all the development, and um, turn a lean organization and infrastructure with a reliable team, we also partner up with enterprise and project um, to, to, to help us. So not all enterprise are evil. So they also care about open source and they also want to contribute to the ecosystem. Uh, so we're very happy to collaborate and work with them. So I'm here because I want to connect with you. I want to see how we can work together in the future. And luckily yesterday, I found, I met uh, Eric from the conference, he said that he's going to develop an Android application that we need for our batch and release it to open source. So my mission kind of complete. I already got a new contributor for Force Asia. <laughs> Uh, this is some idea how we can work together. So if you organize an event, no matter how big, how small it is, you can try out Event Yay. We are still looking for a distribution partner for our Pocket Science Lab. If you work for university or you want to get them for your student, uh, please uh, try it out. Uh, we're looking for people who want to co-organize or sponsor our coding programs and more contests. And hire us if you want to give the to get more funding so we can continue to work on the open source uh, projects and partner with us, partner with the Force Asia Academy. If you have any content that you'd like to share or you'd like to teach in uh, in Asia, get in touch with us. And finally, join our upcoming events. Lastly, something that I learned personally to be a good contributor, a good citizen in the open source space, always stay humble, flexible, and passionate about what you are doing. Our friend in Hong Kong, many people in the Hong Kong open source group are participating in the contest. And you can see a lot of students study while being part of the contest. Young people everywhere in Asia are inspired to do something to make the world a better place. And um, uh, we need to leverage that energy for the open source community. So we come to Asia, connect with us, and work together with them. These are a list of events that are coming up out of Force Asia. If you want to visit it, come to our event. We have uh, the next one in Bangkok, October 1st and 2nd. Uh, and then Ho Chi Minh City, October 11 and 12, and then another open tech in Sunshan, China in, uh, in November 21st to 23rd. And our annual Force Asia Summit again gonna be in Singapore in March from the 19th to 22nd. So check it out and keep in touch, connect with us. Thank you very much for your time. All right, we have time for some questions. So if you have one, raise your hand and we'll do the mic for the recording. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Really, really interesting. Um, I was curious about one of the uh, bullet points you put up on the slide about working in GSOC. You said something about um, different expectations uh, cult in, uh, for developers based on uh, culture conflict or culture clash. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. Um, so what we see that difficult for, for GSOC, so it's a full-time program. So the, the student expect to work over the summer and continually contribute to the project. But often we get uh, the email of student that, okay, we have all the, all the order uh, 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 arrangement. So they do not commit as they promised in the beginning. Yeah, uh, even though the, the, the program policy is clear, but there's 
often a lot of cases, so we have we people don't know exactly uh, how much time and effort they need to put in. So what we change, so what we adopt now, so before they they, they apply to be part of GSOC, we have our own organization uh, guidelines and requirement that they need to follow. So everything communicate very clearly to them in the beginning. For instance, uh, we will not accept if you miss one week of contribution. So if everything communicates clearly to, to them and at the end, after every evaluation, uh, there is less conflict going on than what we learned from the past. Yeah. So if you go on our website, so we have anyone want to participate with us during GSOC, there will be a requirement. We listed out all the things we expect from the student. And if there is any conflict at every evaluation, we just show them. At uh, the beginning of GSOC, we also do an onboarding talk. So we talk to them, we ask them, have you reviewed the guidelines and requirement? Are you sure you can make this commitment? So make sure everything clear. Yeah. Again, some people say that, oh, they already read everything away. At the end, they will say that I'm not aware of it. So you always have every conversation got archived. So we always have evidence that we show. We already communicate this to you. I also wonder about cultural divide. Do you have ideas about how uh, FOSS participants in the West can be involved in FOSS Asia in a way that would help tech folks bridge that divide between East and West? Because we have different ways of working, different languages. I wonder like, if I or someone from a FOSS project wanted to go to Asia to be involved with FOSS Asia, how could we help bridge some of those divides? Yes, so um, it's, as I mentioned earlier, language is no longer a barrier. A lot of Asian uh, people, now young people, be able to communicate very well in English, but I think uh, the the type of contribution to any open source project also changed over the year. So if you talk about the different culture between the West and, and East, as you know, uh, in Asia, the pressure about earning an income for a living, we don't get a lot of support from the government. So whenever they want to contribute in, into something, they, they need to consider what kind of opportunity they will get to be able to support their own life. So AIC in, in Europe, it could like, it couldn't, it might not be the case now. So a lot of uh, government in the West, they have sufficient support to, to the people. And a lot of people back then, they contribute to open source because they interested in one particular technology or this is something that have with their work. But the mindset of the, of, of, of the, of the Asian type of community, they contribute to open source, they hope like they to, to get uh, to get the opportunity to draw their career in the order to support their family that's totally fine there's nothing wrong about it so uh, being in part of community we just need to ensure that when people support us contribute to us there should be clear opportunity for them out there and as you mentioned how you can support a uh, force asia project there's so many different way uh, to do if you are if you are uh, a coder or developer all of our project available on github or the document about deployment, you can try out, uh, there are a lot of bugs. So basically, there are always enough work to do if you are developers. But something that we are needing right now, we need iOS developers. The reason why we focus first on Android. Many people in developing country, they are not able to afford an, I, an iPhone. And uh, so that last contribution coming from the iOS side to open, uh, open source application in Android phone. And if you are not a developer, we need more people to have documentation. We need people to go out and introduce our project to, to other people. Uh, you can always, you are welcome to come to one of our events. And as I mentioned now at the Force Asia Academy, we need more people to teach. Yeah. So not only offer courses in Singapore, we work together with partner in Bangkok, in Vietnam that go to Central to teach uh, open source. If you happen to be in this country by chance for vacation, you can stop by to meet us and offer some courses during your time there. Yeah. So there are a lot of opportunity for you to get involved. Hi, thank you for your talk. It's It's been really informative and interesting. Um, I wanted to first off declare my strong interest. I run uh, sponsorships and global events for my company, and I'd love to talk to you before we leave. 
of the conference about how we could talk about supporting. Um, but I also have a question about your content, which is you said that a lot of people you found in Asia are traveling and are very interested in having face-to-face -face events. And I was wondering what travel patterns you see. Are they crossing national lines or do they tend to be regional inside a specific country? Uh, just because Asia is such a big place, I wasn't sure exactly what you were referring to. Yeah. And um, also, what are you, if anything, are you doing to get girls um, to travel? Because, you know, if somebody has a young daughter, maybe they don't want them traveling solo. Is there anything that you've put in place logistically to support that? Um, uh, talking about travel, so uh, the, we have different people involved in the Force Asia community. Majority of our contributors coming from India, Sri Lanka, we also have people from Vietnam, from Taiwan. So uh, normally people prefer to travel outside of their country to go somewhere to see new pl little places. Whenever they go somewhere, they can learn something. So we see that people also travel because of the content, the, the topic that they, of their interest. So people, the people that, the, the, the kind of travel I'm talking about, is they travel to meet other contributors to work on projects. So if uh, we try to raise uh, events in different locations where we can bring the Force Asia contributor together, I also see the increased number of people from Asia coming to um, coming here. So I, I already saw quite a number of people to the West. Uh, it's always good to learn what's happening here. So you are so far away. But the sad thing is that it's not so easy for us to travel. I don't know how much longer we'll be able to come to the US with all the visa policy and, and, and everything. Uh, people tend to travel more to Europe with an easier uh, visa policy um, uh, over there. And how do we do to engage uh, women and uh, with family? So as uh, you can see on the picture that I showed earlier, Participate, uh, participants of the Force Asia Summit from the age of 12 until like unlimited uh, age, so we try to raise a, a base where student, where children and also uh, women can can uh, participate in, and um, we also offer travel funding to our contributors. But when we talk about travel uh, support, so we don't look in at whether you are. Uh, we don't look in at your background or your gender, so we're looking at the work that you, that you do. So, of course, uh, the lack of women is, is not a new topic, not only in this industry, everywhere. So we try our best to do what we can uh, to, to help the people. But we also realize that uh, people should be uh, recognized based on their works, not based on their background. So if you are a man and you work very hard because you're not a woman, you're not allowed to go or something. So we don't want to have this concept. We encourage everyone. We also, that's why we introduce different type of contribution, for instance, and non-court contribution, there's a lot of things that women can contribute uh, and be part of the community. Yeah. All right. That's all the time we have for questions. Thank you, Hong Fu. Thank you.